Good afternoon, everyone, on a Thursday, November the 16th. I hope you're having a good Thursday uh, this week. So what is the measure of good leadership? I read this great article from Wes Sadie uh, and made some notes here, really spoke to understanding what makes up a good leader. Um, let's start with this. How do we measure your ability to lead? You know, is it your net worth? Is it your higher position or is it the number of people on your team? How do we measure your ability to lead? Uh, quick story, as he shared, there was a rich king who ruled an entire kingdom with an iron fist and he did not show any mercy at all. Um, he stole money from all his people to build himself up build up his palaces and garner more riches ongoing. The people around him were not trusted and were regularly put down. This literally created a culture around this king that pervaded the entire city that he ruled. Okay, that was the king. In his kingdom, uh, there was a poor but wise farmer who lived close to the city gates. And this farmer was kind, he was generous, to everyone, it was his goal to feed the hungry. People having and leaving and entering this city where the king ruled, uh, who did not have any food, would stop by this poor man's farm and he would pass along whatever he had to give them. Okay, the farmer was so kind that many seeing what he was doing would come work with him uh, without charge. At any given time, he probably had 10 or 12 or 15 people working his farm as volunteers, motivated only by the farmer's mission to make a difference in the lives of those in need. So the question this article points out, it was who was the better leader? Was it the king or was it this poor man? Okay, and would the farmer still be the better leader if the story they say had the king being kind an empowering leader. So how should we measure our leadership capacity? What he goes on to say is that your income, your net worth is not a measure of your capacity to lead. Your income or your net worth is not a measure of your capacity to lead. If that were the case, then every single rich person on this planet who ever existed would be a great leader. And no leader who was poor would qualify in the example of the story I shared, our farmer would be disqualified because he certainly didn't have the riches that the king who ruled his entire nation. So the other piece of it is your high position is also not a measure of your capacity to lead. If that were true, then every person in a high position, a leader, a president, a king, would be considered a great leader. And we know <laughs> from history, current and past, that that is not the case as well. So when leaders do these things well, sometimes they end up with money, high position, or external success. Sometimes they do not. But he went on to share, these are the six ways to measure your capacity for great leadership. Number one is your ability to galvanize people to work with a spirit of cooperation around you. Let me rephrase that. Your ability to galvanize the people around you to work with a real spirit of cooperation, team effort. Number two, your capacity to grow in wisdom, in wisdom up here, to deal with yourself and what thoughts you have as well as others effectively. Number three, your ability to maintain passion for the mission ahead of you. So what is your mission what is your passion? What makes you wake up every single day to drive you and get you out of bed to make a difference in this world? Number four, your sincere desire to honor and love people. Do you honestly love people around you? Number five, your impact on and inspiration of others. And number six, your ability to make things happen. Those are the six things that will allow us to measure our capacity for great leadership. And so he ends the article that the measure of our leadership must not be determined by external fruit, okay? It's our character, my character and your character and our skill that distinguishes a great leader from someone who just happens to hold a high position or carry a sizable bank account at their bank, 
Okay, so we must be cognizant of how we are to measure our leadership to help us direct our focus on our growth journey as leaders. Let's challenge ourselves, as he says, to be like the farmer in the story that I shared, whose motivations were pure and honorable, okay, and whose leadership benefited others. Boy, is that so true. Okay, if riches and high positions come great along your journey, if they don't, that's okay too. So I thought that was a very powerful summation of what the measurement of a great leadership or a good leadership is out there. Hope you found some value in that and what I shared with you in the story. Feel free to comment, share, and like, and we'll chat with you real soon. Bye-bye.